Hello everybody, my name is Austin and today I wanted to showcase a custom add-on I've been working on for Godot for a while now. I've been teasing about it for quite some time, but it's finally finished and freely available for anyone to use in their projects. Let me introduce you to Acros Hitboxes. These are custom nodes that allow the user to apply knockback and damage to any object by changing the trajectory and the strength of the knockback, allowing the user to visually see the launch angle and strength to reduce the amount of trial and error from traditional knockback generating methods. Along with that, the user can modify the length, width, and color of the hitbox, as well as enabling and disabling the hitbox whenever they desire. I believe this custom node can truly help game developers of all levels by streamlining the approach to applying knockback and damage, making it easier for both game jams and larger scale projects such as action adventure games and fighting games. Today, I will show you how to include acros hitboxes into your projects, how to use them, and some examples on how they could be used in your projects. In order to download Acros Hitboxes, you can either go to the GitHub link in the description, download the add-on, and put it in your project, or go to the Godot Asset Library and search up Acros Projects and download it from there. Once it's downloaded, make sure the add-on is enabled and you reload your project. Now you can add a child node and search up Hitbox. You should now see a new node on your Area 2D with a red circle labeled Hitbox. Double click on it and it'll create a Hitbox node. You should now see a red tinted square. Clicking on the Hitbox in your scene should show a bunch of variables. Starting from the top is Launch Angle. This will affect where your object will be launched if it connects to the hitbox. Strength affects how far the object will be launched, which is properly shown in the editor with how long the launch angle line is. Damage returns an integer that can be used to return the amount of damage an object will be taken once it's hit by a certain attack. Knockback scale returns a float from 0 to 1 and is only used for advanced calculations, such as if the user wants the amount of knockback an object receives to increase based on the amount of damage it's already taken. Scale X and Y changes the length and width of the hitbox. Disabled works exactly exactly how the collision shape 2D button works. Reversed inverts the launch angle on its X axis. Line thickness changes the width of the launch angle line, making it easier for the user to see. Draw line in game enables the launch angle line to be drawn whenever the game is running. This will most likely be used for debug purposes. And finally, hitbox color changes the color of the hitbox. Keep in mind, if the color of the hitbox is oddly colored compared to what you selected, you'll have to go into your project settings and change the collision shape color to white, which I would recommend everyone should change in their projects regardless. One final variable that is worth mentioning is that you can modify the hitbox's collision layer and mask. The hitbox node itself has a lot of getter and setter functions, but the only function that is very important to know about is the get launch vector function. This function is how you can apply knockback to your objects. The get launch vector function takes two parameters that are labeled angle and strength. This function returns a launch vector from calculating the angle and strength parameters for you to apply knockback whenever needed. What you see on screen is a proof of concept project showcasing the use of this add-on. As you can see, when the ball is in contact with the hitbox, the ball is launched to whatever angle the line shows, and always receives a set amount of damage. This can all be adjusted with the sliders, as well as reset the ball to neutral, enabling disabling the hitbox, and resetting the entire scene, including the settings. Under the hood, these sliders are just buttons that updates the hitbox's variables. The ball's physics function is the typical bouncing ball script, however the ball also has an array entered function for an array 2D with collision. This function first adds the damage to the hitbox's current damage, then it creates a variable that adds the strength of the hitbox with the strength multiplied by the ball's current damage, and multiplied by the knockback scale if there's any knockback scaling in general. The 125 is only a magic number to improve the knockback scaling for this example. Finally, the ball receives the knockback vector by using the get launch vector function with the hitbox's launch angle and the new distance variable that was created. This will allow the knockback of the ball to increase the more damage it takes. This project here shows a more practical example on how to use it for your own game projects. Here we have a rectangle that can move around, jump, and attack. You may notice that the hitboxes are circles here. That's because this project is using an earlier version of the hitbox node where I was testing out different collision shapes. However, everything I say here applies to the official add-on. Anyway, in the animation player, I can edit the position, size, damage, and knockback of the hitbox and enable and disable it whenever I please, without needing the code whatsoever. It's only a matter of switching to the animation and the player script, and voila, we can now hit the ball. I am also able to reverse the knockback whenever the player is facing the other way by calling the hitbox's reverse variable to return true. And whenever I'm not facing the other way, it's returning the false. 
There is a lot of potential with this add-on and can reshape how people generate hitboxes in Godot. The goal of Acro's hitboxes is to streamline the process of generating knockback and damage from collision. And I believe this add-on does the job perfectly and is simple to understand for game developers. And to sweeten the deal, I will be making this add-on open source and under the MIT license for anyone to use in their projects and modify to their heart's content. If you are indeed interested in using Acro's hitboxes, there is a link to the GitHub page in the description and a link to the ball example for anyone to test out and mess around with. If you want to help financially support this add-on and Acro products in general, you can go to my coffee page and send a donation. Any amount you give is so greatly appreciated. Even if you don't do so, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and help spread the word out about this new Godot add-on as I truly think this could help other game developers. This add-on has been something I've been working on and off for for a while now, but was motivated to finish it thanks to the Godot add-on jam. I highly recommend going to the itch page to see the amazing work other Godot users have been doing, or if you just want to participate in it last minute. But with that all being said, take care, comb your hair, and I'll see you guys later.